Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the core concepts and architecture of Kubernetes in some details. So you have got these components: nodes, pods, services, replica sets, deployments, and uh, in the architecture, which I am going to show and explain in detail, is about master node, worker nodes, etcd, API server, controller manager, scheduler, kubelet, kube proxy. So this is the Kubernetes architecture diagram. There is a master node and there is a worker node, and Kubernetes architecture is composed of several key components. At a high level, a Kubernetes cluster consists of master nodes and worker nodes. So, master node and worker node, and the master node contains components like the API server, scheduler, controller manager, and etcd. While the worker nodes run the kubelet and kube proxy. The smallest deployable units are pods. That can be scaled using replica sets and managed through deployments. Service expose these pods to the network, and these pods, the uh, in practice, it, the container is also an example of a pod. This one pod can contain single or more than one container, and this is the container runtime like the Docker. Now let's discuss the Kubernetes architecture in more detail. So it is. A powerful open source platform designed to automate the deployment, scaling, and operation of application content containers. Its architecture is built on robust foundation that ensures scalability, flexibility, and resilience. Now let's discuss the core components and the Kubernetes architecture in a bit more detail. So let's see what is a Kubernetes cluster. So this is a Kubernetes CKE container cluster. Or um, and it has got a cluster master with which runs the Kubernetes processes. So Kubernetes cluster consists of a set of worker machines called nodes. Okay, these are nodes, and each of these nodes can contain one to multiple pods, and each cluster at least each cluster has at least one node, one worker node, and the control. Plane manages the worker nodes and the pods in the cluster. So, in a production environment, the control plane usually spans multiple computers, and a cluster usually runs multiple nodes. It can be more than these. And there are three nodes here. It is shown one behind the other, and it provides the fault tolerance and high availability by running. On multiple nodes, the cluster running on multiple nodes, whereas the control plane spans multiple computers. Now, the control plane we have seen earlier, we'll see it again in the next slide. So, this is the master node, which is the control plane. In fact, so control plane in components are Cube API server. This is the Cube API server, and Let's see what is a Cube API server does. So this Cube API server, this component exposes the Kubernetes API. It is the front end for the Kubernetes control plane. The Cube API server is designed to scale horizontally, that is, deploying more instances of it. And what is this etcd? Etcd is a consistent and highly available key value store used as Kubernetes backing store for all cluster data. So this is a key value store, which is highly available as a backing store. Now, if your Kubernetes cluster uses etcd as its backing store, make sure you have a backup plan for those data. Okay. And there is this Cube Scheduler. Cube Scheduler watches for newly created pods with no assigned node and selects a node for them to run. Factors which are taken into account for scheduling decisions include individual and collective resource requirements, hardware software policy constraints, affinity and anti affinity specifications, data locality, inter workload interference, and deadlines. So, these things I don't want to take in detail, the things that the cube scheduler does. And then we have got the cube controller manager, which runs the controller processes. So logically, it uh, does these 
replication, namespace, service accounts, all of these managers. These are there are a few type of cube controller manager, and uh, like you know, there is a node controller which is responsible for um, noticing and responding when nodes go down, and uh, there is a replication controller. This is etcd, cube scheduler, cube controller manager, node controller, replication controller. The node controller is responsible for noticing and responding when nodes go down. Replication controller is responsible for maintaining the correct number of pods for every replication controller object in the system. And there is an endpoints controller which populates the endpoints object that is it joins service and pods. And there is a service accounts and token controller, which create default accounts and API access tokens for new namespaces. Then there is the there are the node components which are kubelet, kube proxy, and container runtime. So kubelet is an agent that runs on each node in the cluster. It ensures that the containers are running in a pod. The kubelet takes a set of pod specs that are provided through various mechanisms and ensures that the containers described in those pod specs are running and healthy. And kube proxy services, as overall it manages networking part for nodes. So it maintains network rules on nodes. These network rules allow network communication to your pods from network session inside or outside of your cluster. And then there is a Container runtime, which is not shown here, but that is the uh, software which is responsible for running containers. Kubernetes supports several container runtimes. Sorry, for example, the Docker, which is the most common, and that's it.